coaching movement around the NFL, how it could impact the 49ers down one assistant already now this offseason. 49ers offensive coordinator, a finalist for the Miami Dolphins job and tanking in Miami. And were the 49ers a victim of taking back in 2017? Also, Crocs, Senior Bowl Report coming up right now. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers, Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker with you at BD Peacock at Eric underscore Crocker. If you're used to watching the show on YouTube, you probably recognize that's not Croc's normal background. Yes, he is in Mobile, Alabama at the Senior Bowl. So I'm going to get some thoughts from him from some prospects that are standing out so far this week at the College All-Star Game and pretty important for the 49ers, right, to be scouting this Senior Bowl because a lot of the underclassmen that come out are big-time prospects or those first-round picks. So rounds two, three, four, five all the way through, um, but especially the mid-round where the 49ers have been really good in that mid-round area. A lot of those prospects are the ones you're going to be watching at Senior Bowl this week, right, Croc? Yeah, and the 49ers, they've taken quite a few players from the Senior Bowl as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have, yeah. Debo Samuel was one of them. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about a 49ers draft back in 2017 in a little bit about maybe did they get done a little bit raw when it comes to them earning the second pick, the very first draft pick that the 49ers had in this regime for John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan. Um, but first, before we get to some of that stuff, I do uh, want to let the folks out there know about Get Upside. Just download the free Get Upside app and use promo code touchdown to get 25 cents per gallon or more cash back on your very first tank this episode brought to you by get upside uh croc the 49ers have fired it looks like or potentially just asked him to take a pay cut and he didn't want to do that so he's not coming back i don't know if you officially call that a firing but tight ends coach john Embry looks like he is not coming back to the 49ers not only a tight ends coach but also he was held holding the title of assistant head coach this has me thinking a little bit, Croc, that since Mike McDaniel, the 49ers offensive coordinator, is a finalist for the Miami Dolphins job, uh, there's been speculation maybe Richard Hightower could go as well. Maybe the 49ers are looking at coaches, talking to some assistants around the league that they might be hiring, and realizing that they need that extra title, that assistant head coach title that John Embry had, to entice some maybe some high level assistant to come to the 49ers that they need to give extra money and titles to to even get him to come over to the 49ers and maybe that's because it just doesn't add up because you know the, seems like John Embry's done a good job well respected member of the coaching staff obviously coached up George Kittle from a fifth round pick to become a, an all pro type of player is the assistant head coach title being held on to for maybe somebody like, say, Rich Bisaccia, who uh, was the interim and is a big-time special teams coordinator that would probably have to – you'd have to give a lot of money to um, if the 49ers wanted to improve special teams maybe. And there's been speculation that Richard Hightower could go. Maybe it's somebody they need to bring in and give more money to, give the title of assistant head coach because he's not going to be a play caller if he's Kyle Shanahan's offensive coordinator. If Mike McDaniels leaves, do you think there's anything uh, to that? You know, I, I've always been confused with what the hell an assistant head coach is. You know, it's like you got the head coach, and I, I know, I mean, I've been a part of teams that have an assistant head coach, and I don't know what the hell the difference is between whatever they do and what they wouldn't do if they didn't have that title. So that part, I don't know. But clearly it means something to Embry because it sounds like there's potentially more money involved in it. And if the reports are correct, all right, you guys got to bear with me. I'm losing my voice a little bit. If the if the reports are correct, 60% pay cut? Like, I, I'm not, like, no, don't ask me to take a 60% pay cut. Yeah, I saw that report, too. And it's like, wait a second, 60%, that doesn't even make sense. That's way too that's much. That's huge. Yeah. That, that's yeah. like, if you, let's say he's getting paid a million dollars a year. Yeah. You want me to go from making a million a year to 400000 Like, no. Because when, I mean, we hear 60%. And depending on how much money you make, it might not be that big of a difference, right? But going from a million dollars a year 
to six hundred to four hundred thousand, like taking six hundred thousand off, like that. That's a that's a big that's a big deal. Is that is there that much responsibility with assistant head coach? And is that how much that makes? Like, do, do normal tight ends coach makes do, do does a normal tight ends coach make four hundred k and a normal assistant head coach that position is that a six hundred k position? Is is it like that? Maybe it is. I, I wouldn't think so. Sixty percent seems like a lot, and obviously you're going to say no to that if you're John Embry, do right. So, uh, I, I yeah, that that was an interesting report when I saw that, and that's why my mind went well. It's got to be the assistant head coach part of that the fact that they might be, I mean, and we'll see who they hire as the assistant head coach. And, and maybe there's something to that. And they asked him to, to remove that title and, and take off whatever that pay was from, uh, from his role. And he wasn't having it. So John Embry will be back with the San Francisco 49ers. Will Mike McDaniel be back with the San Francisco 49ers? And man, um, sort of a bomb that Brian Flores dropped with this lawsuit against the league. I mean, we don't have time to even get into all that stuff, but obviously racial discrimination, the sham, uh, the sham co head coaching interviews that he's been a part of and has evidence of those talking about <laughs> talking about John Elway showing up hour late and drunk head coach interview with the Denver Broncos. Right. Like, did you see what uh, Elway said? No. What did he say? I didn't see the response. Oh, actually, no, I think it was actually a spoof response. Oh, okay. He wasn't drunk, but it was something. Yeah, it was a spoof response. My bad. Look, My bad. So I've, I've seen two uh, and I haven't read the whole document. And there's a lot of legalese in there, and it's like makes you makes me cross-eyed even trying to read some of that stuff. But um, it was like he the, it was like, oh, they had clearly drunk the night before. And it's like, okay, well, so what? You know, if they weren't drunk at the meeting, like you can drink the night before, whatever, but they were late to the meeting, and that was the thing. Are you like dragging ass and you're hung over because you drank the night before? I mean, there's uh, look, there's a lot of alcohol that's consumed in NFL circles coaches in front office people I, like i don't think that should be uh, a secret so if they drank the night before whatever but if they're showing disrespect by uh, a sham of an interview and showing up late then that's on its own bad enough but if you're actually like an hour at, late. if you're drunk at the interview i mean that would be that would be ridiculous but then there's the stuff about tanking right the and this blows my mind because this is something that you, you hear about tanking. Is this team tanking? And usually it's more of a front office thing. You take the talent away from a, a, a team and they're, they're not going to win as many games. That's sort of like the natural tank that we've we've learned about. But I've never heard this. And now we have another coach, not only Brian Flores, saying about the Dolphins, that owner Stephen Ross wanted him to lose games, told him, told, told him they give $100,000 per game that he loses. That's insane. And now Hugh Jackson, who's head coach of the Browns, saying that Jimmy Haslam was telling him the same thing with the Cleveland Browns. And, and that blows my mind. So before you get to the Browns part of things, which might have actually affected the 49ers, just going to Miami, if you, Croc, are – Offensive coordinator of the 49ers, Mike McDaniel, and you hear all this about the Miami Dolphins and they offer you a job, a team that that asked one of their coaches to tank and is going to fire you for winning too many games. Would you even consider that job? I'd have a I would have a tough time. And there's not many head coach jobs in the NFL. This might be your only shot, but that doesn't seem like a great shot. And I think we're starting to see a lot of the reason why the Miami Dolphins haven't been very successful for a while now. I think. The, the last thing you said was was key there. there. There aren't that many head coaching opportunities, but I mean, jobs open up every single year and you want to make sure it's the right job and not just the right job because people think so, but be, it's the right job for you. I, I don't think you want to take a job just to take a job, especially if you have a good, sweet gig and you want to stay involved in the organization. I mean, 49ers have some good things going for themselves. I feel like no matter what, if he's going to be offered a job this year, he'll be offered a job next year as well. And it might be a better suited job than a poorly ran organization, which is what's going on in Miami uh, for whatever reason. And asking guys to, to tank. You can't, you can't, nobody. Can you imagine someone going to Kyle Shanahan and saying, hey, Kyle, you know what? You, you need to tank. Like Kyle takes me as a person that to tells somebody to F off. Right. Like, yeah. Or, or, or what about like Jim Harbaugh? What if you go to Jim Harbaugh and say, "Hey Jim, I oh, want man. you to lose this weekend." What would his response be? He look. I mean, I I, I couldn't even imagine. I, mean, I know he'd look at you crazy. Like, what what, right. what are you talking about? Lose? Yeah. It's insane. He's not it's, wired that way. And and I, I don't think you want to tie yourself to an organization like that. And and in the end, even if you don't get that head coaching job, you probably be better off for it because in two years or one year, you're gonna be fired anyway. 
And maybe you got you could have gotten a better job in that time if you believe in yourself and you're in a good situation. And I think I think Mike McDaniel is, and I think he'll be just as sought after, if not more, next offseason than he is right now, uh, and maybe have a better opportunity and a better job. So and speaking of speaking of Jim Harbaugh, that it's looking more and more like he's gonna be the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. Is that maybe one of the reasons why D'Amico Ryans removed his name from consideration for that Vikings job and didn't go to that sec second interview because he thought it was a sham interview that they were interviewing only for one reason, because to satisfy the Rooney rule and he didn't really have a shot to get that job because he knew that Harbaugh was going to be the head coach there. Obviously this is a topic that, you know, it kind of frustrates me because we can see it. I'm at the senior bowl and I see Mike Tomlin walk on the field and I'm like, Oh man, it's Mike Tomlin. You know, you just look, I'm just his presence. Yeah. Then I'm looking and I'm like, he's the only black head coach in the NFL. And it, that's just the wildest thing to me. You know, are there not enough qualified guys? I don't think that's the case. But for whatever reason, the, you know, I, I don't know why. But the numbers, I mean, the, it speaks volumes to me. Out of, out of 32 teams, one spot is occupied by an African-American. Now, you do have Robert Sala, and he is a... He, he, you know, he's a, a minority, but as far as African Americans go, you, you got one in the NFL, and you know, D'Amico Ryan's doesn't want to be a part of again a sham, and he's probably looking at it like, hey, I have a good thing going here in San Francisco. If I continue to do the things that I believe I can do as a coordinator, then you know, I'll throw my hat in the ring next year, and hopefully, I'm the guy that people are approaching first, and not because they want to fulfill some Rooney rule. And that's the issue with the Rooney rule as well. Like, you, you know, there's that aspect of it. I mean, you hate that you there has to be some type of incentives to hire African-American or minority coaches, you know, even with teams promoting them to uh, eventually receive draft picks back. You know, if, oh, if I promote this guy to coordinator and he leaves, like, you know, why can't it just happen because this is the best guy for the job? You know, and, and it's frustrating. Hell, at the Senior Bowl, and not to say that Nagy's not doing a great job. They're doing an awesome job. But the HBCU combine that they did, you know, rushed. Uh, you know, guys only having three weeks to prepare for it. But, hey, this might be our only time to work out in front of a lot of these pro scouts. Uh, they also have four uh, head coaches from the HBCU schools on the uh, rosters, two on one side, two on the other, to help just to kind of bring awareness to these guys. And that's a whole another conversation because I spoke with one of them. You know, it's just, it's unfortunate the, the way that that is and the, the hoops that certain guys have to jump through to potentially get a shot to be a head coach when they're just as qualified as anyone else. It's frustrating. Right. And, and not only the climb to get one of those 32 jobs in the NFL, but also how quickly some of the coaches get fired. And how long of a leash some coaches have versus some other coaches and not getting second opportunities. So uh, it's not even just getting the first shot. Sometimes it's getting the second shot and, and make sure you get the right first shot when you do um, like David Coley, like what's going <laughs> David Coley in Houston. Like he had zero chance to, to win games. Basically. They didn't even want them. They, they wanted, yeah. they wanted McCown. Everybody and knew that. They justify hiring McCown who had no prior coaching experience, none. You cannot hire Josh McCown right now, especially if you're interviewing Brian Flores and you say, ah, oh, Brian Flores, you know, we're going to, we're going to fire Coley. Who's in a no win situation who actually did a really good job for being in such a bad situation in Houston. And we're going to interview Brian Flores, but we're going to hire a guy who's never coached anywhere ever. Not a sink. He's never coached anywhere. He coached high school. Or high school, okay. <laughs> Never coached in the NFL. Not a quarterback coach, nothing. And he was essentially a quasi-quarterback coach when he was a player, right? But uh, he's never been a coach, never never done any of that in the NFL. Never You're coached at the collegiate NFL. level. That's, oof, that's, no, I'm not buying that one. Not buying, and he might be a good coach eventually, but go take a damn quarterback coach job, then be in coordinator, then go become a head coach in the NFL, right? Um, so uh, anyway, so we got we, we to gotta move on. I have some questions for you about this tanking as it pertains to the Cleveland Browns and the 49ers not having pick number one in 2017, but having pick number 
two in 2017 instead. Uh, the 49ers making some moves for the future of their roster and Crocs Senior Bowl report coming up. An incredible app, though, that everyone who buys gas needs to know about. It's called Get Upside. You've heard me talk about it before. I use the app. It's on my phone right now. I used it today. In fact, I knew I was going to get gas. You pull up the app. You look at the map. You say, I'm getting gas there anyway. Let's get some cash back from each gallon of gas that I get. Just download the free Get Upside app, and you can too. Find it in the App Store, Google Play right now, and use promo code TOUCHDOWN for $0.25 cents per gallon or more on your first fill up cash back don't pay full price at the pump anymore it's super easy you just get gas the cash goes back into your account no no uh no catch at all that cash you can put into your bank account from your get upside account you can cash out anytime to paypal uh you can buy an e-gift card amazon card whatever you want just download the free get upside app and use promo code touchdown to get 25 cents per gallon or more cash back on your first tank that is code touchdown with the get upside app croc speaking of tanking so we've heard two instances now both brian flores with the miami dolphins and now hugh jackson coming out and saying that he was told as head coach of the cleveland browns to tank and lose games on purpose so they could get a better draft pick which they successfully did during the 2016 season earning the number one pick in the 2017 draft. The team that if they did not potentially tank, that would have had the first pick in the 2017 draft, that would be our San Francisco 49ers crock. And I was, when I heard the Hugh Jackson thing, I thought, wow, Cleveland Browns too, huh? This is pretty insane. And then I was reminded by uh, Jeff Dini, a good friend of the show from Pro Football Focus. That very last week, game 16, week 17 of the 2016 season, it was the Cleveland Browns against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I watched this game because, you know, we were hoping for uh, the number one pick in the draft for the San Francisco 49ers. And the Browns, all they did was have to win this one game. And the Steelers did everything possible to allow the Browns to go win the game. Cleveland had first and goal from the Pittsburgh five-yard line in the final minute of a tie game. And their running back, which I believe was Isaiah Crowell, fumbled the ball away at the goal line and I think he like fumbled it through the side of the end zone. So that meant, it meant it was a touchback, and the Pittsburgh Steelers got the ball back. So all he had to do was not fumble, walk into the end zone. The 49ers have the first pick in the NFL draft, who became Miles Garrett, by the Miles way. Miles Garrett. That was, that was the prize in that draft. And the 49ers ended up with the second pick, moved back one spot with the Bears. They drafted Solomon Thomas, moved back in the first round, ended up getting... Um, Ruben Foster as well. So it was a huge whiff of a first round for the San Francisco 49ers. And, and how different would that have started for the Niners to start with Miles Garrett at defensive end with this regime, right? You wouldn't even have had to, you probably would have been too good at that point to get Nick Bosa, but you wouldn't have needed Nick Bosa in the 2019 yeah. draft, right? So anyway. Yeah. Um, Got Solomon Thomas instead. <laughs> right. So that was, that was in regulation. So this game stays tied and it goes into overtime. So what happened in overtime? Cleveland had first and goal again at the two yard line, lost 14 yards from the two yard line and settled for a field goal. And then Pittsburgh came back and won it with a touchdown in overtime. So they ended up losing. The Browns did and ended up with the first pick. <laughs> and the Niners ended up with the second pick in the 2017 draft. And I, I didn't think about it at first until Jeff told that story. And then it, it vividly came back in my mind watching this game because it looked like a team trying as hard as they could to lose. Was Isaiah Crowelli on it? He's like, hey, here's a little. If you're gonna pay the coach a hundred thousand dollars, why would you not play a payer? Play, pay pay a player a hundred thousand dollars. And if you're Isaiah Crowell and you're like, mm, I was a seventh round pick or maybe undrafted, he had some problems in college too, right? There were some concerns with him. That's the player you go to. Hey, fumble on the goal line. Here's the hundred k. And he's like, sweet, thank you very much. Doesn't matter to me if we lose or win this game. We're bad either way. <laughs> so maybe I don't know, I, but that looked like a tank if there ever was a tank. That was the most unbelievable loss I've ever witnessed as a fan of NFL football. And that would be evidence number one that a team was trying to tank because that was that was the most Im impossibly uh, impossibly blown game I've ever seen. Yeah. 
I remember that game. Incredible. I believe RG3 was the quarterback for the uh, for the Cleveland Browns in that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, you know, in the 49ers, on the flip side of it, did everything they could to win a game against the New York Jets. Excuse me, late in that season with Colin Kaepernick uh, willing like a come from behind win, I believe it was, and scoring like a basically a walk-off touchdown to win that game in the New York Jets. So, uh yeah, 49ers definitely had a different mindset. Definitely not a team that's getting incentives to tank. I mean, think about the the t- the team that started off one and ten. There was no tanking in that in that season either with Kyle Shanahan. Or later on that season in 2017, the 49ers were yeah what what zero and eight when they traded for Garoppolo. I think they did get the first win before Jimmy played yeah. right. Yeah, so one in ten is that what it was, and then won five straight with Jimmy G. Right? They could have had the, the number one pick in that draft too if they wanted to, but there was no tanking. They're trying to win, and, and they actually turned the thing around late and really wrecked their draft position. Hell, think of you know a couple years later, uh, just what 2020, where I'm looking at, I'm like, stop winning. Now again, <laughs> I'm not giving them money to to to, to yeah, lose. There's no, uh, there's no uh, 100 Ks coming out of Crocker's pocket. Yeah, or there's not 100K coming to Crocker, all right? Nope. <laughs> so, you know, I'm like, man, like, you know, I'm looking at them and it's like, man, you guys need to stop winning. But there, there was never that doubt of fight in that team, no matter who was that quarterback. They went through several quarterbacks, had to finish the year with C.J. Beathard. They won a game with C.J. Beathard playing quarterback where he was barely completing passes. I mean, no no quit. So we, we know one thing, the 49ers organization, they're not wired that way, that's for sure. And Jet York, he's the he's the leader of, of that, bringing that mentality. And you just look at all matter of the- fact, real quick, because okay. you talked about uh, Hugh Jackson, who kind of had, I mean, he was one in 32 or one in 31, whatever, in two years, and still was coming back for another year where, you know, you look at what Jet York did. He had a, a five-win season by Tom Sula. <laughs> you're out of here. You're not the guy. Two-win yeah. season by Chip Kelly. You're out of here. You're not the guy. So clearly, Jet York, he ain't playing those games. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, and that's the difference between franchises like the San Francisco 49ers and, and the Cleveland Browns, why they've lost for so long. Uh, the Miami Dolphins are, are not in a good place. They've continually hired bad coaches uh, or you know, and fired the, the best coach they've had in a while and are trying to get that guy to tank, and he won't play ball. And then you find out he's hard to deal with. Yeah, because you're trying to get him to lose games, and he's not about that. Uh, so th- that's crazy, man. Um, I don't think you want to tie yourself to franchises like the Browns and the Dolphins, if that's the case, right? Y- you flat out don't. So we'll see if Mike McDaniel ends up being the next head coach, the Miami Dolphins. Uh, I, it might be a good career decision. I, I don't think it's ever bad for your pocketbook to become a head coach, even if it only lasts a year or two. But will in, in the end, would it, would it hurt him? And would it be the smart move? I don't know. But we'll find out there. Next, I want to get to Croc's Senior Bowl report. But first, a couple of notes on some futures contracts and some street free agents. The 49ers are already getting going for the 2022 season. Some familiar names on this list. One, Jordan Matthews, the tight end. He's continuing to transition to a tight end in the NFL. We saw him in training camp last year. Looks like he's coming back and going to be at training camp with the 49ers. Again, we'll see how his weight's looking, see if he's got that sand in the pants to be a a tight end and this time maybe stick with the team. Um, Alex Barrett, defensive lineman, Josh Hokett, fullback, familiar names to the 49ers. A few other names here, Alfredo Gutierrez, who is part of the international program and I think uh, had a free roster spot on the uh, on the practice squad this year for the 49ers, and he is back on a futures contract with the Niners. How about this name, though? Keyshawn Johnson from Fresno State. I remember him coming out of the draft. He got drafted by the Arizona Cardinals. They took like four wide receivers one year, and he was one of them. And I liked him coming out of Fresno State. Do you remember what your scouting report was on Keyshawn Johnson coming out of Fresno State a couple years ago, Carl? Um, he was a smooth, solid receiver, but I didn't have like this, you know, glowing take on him. I I just remember him being solid. Yeah, he was solid day three guy. You know, I'm always paying attention when there's prospects out of Fresno just because it was close to where I grew up. Um, but he was sort of like medium size, medium speed, didn't really flash, didn't really blow you away, but seemed like a good receiver that could probably stick. So we'll see if he does kind of like a Kendrick Bourne type, like, you know, yeah, yeah, similar style of prospect. Um, didn't take off like Kendrick Bourne did, though, unfortunately for him with the Cardinals. We'll see if he maybe can fill that role with the Niners. Austin Mack, another wide receiver on a futures contract, a linebacker. 
Curtis Robinson, defensive lineman Chris Slayton, wide receiver Connor Weddington, uh, cornerback Kadar Holman, tight end Tanner Hudson, and that is it. So those are some of the names, street free agents of future contracts. The 49ers have been doing some work. Shout out to David Lombardi who compiled that list that I just read from there. Next, let's talk Senior Bowl. Let's talk prospects, maybe some future San Francisco 49ers draft picks in Mobile, Alabama. And you know what? You can find a bet online. You can find draft props. You can find Super Bowl props. You can find uh, odds props, more lines than ever before as we march toward the Super Bowl in just a couple of weeks here. Not only football, basketball, college and pro. There is NHL, boxing, UFC, live real-time updated lines of current games when games are going on so go to betonline.net which remains the best spot for all your sports scores podcasts and news this season don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022 at bet online including some futures on maybe that 2022 49ers Maybe which uh, team is going to be signing Jimmy Garoppolo? You can find tons of lines at Bet Online. Bet Online, where the game starts. With the ever increasing number of makes and models, it's now possible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. So why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning, standing in line, waiting for someone behind the counter to look at a screen that you can't see to maybe give you a part? That's the only p- part that they have in stock for your vehicle when there's so much more at reliably low prices available at rockauto.com. I mean, why let that guy use his computer and charge you 50%, 100% more for the same part when you've got a computer in your pocket and you can access rockauto.com and have that part shipped straight to you at home? E- easy stuff, too. Do you have jumper cables? Do you need some wiper blades? Go find it. At rockauto.com. I know Crocs. And carpet. <laughs> yes, yeah, carpet. Some of you guys got kids and they spill, you know, they got stains on the carpet. You need new carpet. Yes. The shampoo's not getting it out. Rockauto.com. They got carpet for you as well. Croc, that's the dad life right there. You got to keep that carpet looking good in your vehicle. Uh, I, I can just picture Croc being uh, halfway underneath his vehicle trying to, trying to fix himself up some stuff. Save a little bit of cash and you can do that at rockauto.com for all you do-it-yourselfers. So go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck, right? Locked on in the how-did-you-hear-about-us box so they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, and all the parts your car or truck could ever need at rockauto.com. All right, Croc, it's that time. What position groups are you watching closely? Anybody uh, jump out to you in the first couple of days of practices at the Senior Bowl so far that you could maybe look ahead and say, yeah, this this guy might be a nice little fit for the San Francisco 49ers in the 2022 draft. Well, there are definitely a few guys, but first I want to ask you because I, I hear social media, right? I see social media. I see the t- what people feel like the 49ers need. I think I differ a little bit from them. I want to ask you if there are one position where you like, you know what, if this guy is the highest on my draft board, and the position the the position he plays meets a need for the 49ers and he's be around it was you know he's in at the end of the second round what position is that for you so late second round late third round area what would be sort of the top couple of positions if you're hoping that position is i guess just in general yeah uh, one of the I top would... for you 49ers need to address this this offseason in a draft I think edge long term is a big one. Edge. I think that's, center, that's it. Center too. You got to look at those interior offensive linemen. Uh, Max not yeah. getting any younger, and if you have a center, he can probably kick out and play some guard if Mac comes back for another year. So center and edge. Although Abelcom came on late in the season, mid season, I thought Abelcom no way he was going to be getting a contract for the 49ers in 2022, but he might have earned that money, so it might push edge down a little bit. Just knowing that you could potentially re-sign Arden Key and you have Bosa and you have Abelcom. Maybe that would take Edge out of the top, but Edge is always a need. John Lynch is always going to lean heavily on defensive line, so I, I wouldn't be shocked at all if defensive line and Edge was the first position the 49ers drafted. And I was a little bit shocked and a little bit uh, disappointed that they didn't draft a guy in the second round last year who was one of my top couple of guys 
uh, on the board when they drafted Aaron Banks, and uh, that was uh, Aziz Ojalari out of Georgia. I mean, he was the exact perfect fit for what the 49ers needed, and they passed on that last year, got a big-bodied guard. So maybe this year they flip the script and they pass on the center that I've been talking about, maybe go with the edge in the second round. But you have some names yeah, there well, at edge. Is that is that what you saw out there flashing for you? Yeah, one, one guy, I, I don't know if he's going to be there when the 49ers pick. Uh, this first guy I'm going to talk about, but Jermaine Johnson out of Florida State. And if you want kind of more of a really cool breakdown of it, go over to the Locked On the NFL Draft Show. Listen to it with myself, Ryan Tracy, Rob Ring, and a guest, one of my buddies. I brought him on. He's a defensive line guy. He played defensive line uh, professionally. He coaches. He trains those guys up in Minnesota. And he was talking about uh, he. There were a lot of things that he really liked about Jermaine Johnson and some of the things that he's doing that he's seeing at the Senior Bowl. Also, uh, our guy uh, uh, Mafi uh, Boye Mafi out of Minnesota, six three and a half, uh, two hundred fifty five pounds. He won. He's won every single one on one rep so far. On the end, also slid into a three tech and was able to beat guys there with speed. He's out of Minnesota. That's another terrific job. So I think Boye has more of an opportunity to potentially be there uh, late second round. I could see that happening. Boye Mafe, uh, not sure about Jermaine Johnson. He, he might have played himself into the first round. I mean, uh, he, he's been a monster there. You can make yourself a lot of money, and if you meet the height, weight, speed criteria the teams are looking for, you have a big week at Mobile, Alabama, and you play a position that is highly in need for almost every roster in the NFL, like edge rusher. And I'm looking at uh, listed 6'5", 265. Did you see what he weighed yeah. in? I, I'm not sure. I'm going because... to try to see if I can find his uh, senior bowl weight. Yeah, because uh, that's that's ideal. I mean, that is prototype defensive end, 6'5", 265. If you can win off the edge as a pass rusher, yeah, he, he Jermaine Johnson could absolutely be making himself a ton of money at the Senior Bowl. This he, he stood out day one, and today he might have even been even better. He was like the winner day one, might have been even better. Now, another position that people are, you know, really excited about, and I actually talked to one of these guys, and I asked him, hey, what do you think about the opportunity of potentially teaming back up with your college quarterback, Trey Lance? And, of course, I'm talking about Christian Watson out of North Dakota State, 6'4", 211-pound receiver. Now, I know a lot of people are like, man, 49ers don't need – they don't need a receiver. They got Juwan uh, – why am I blanking on Juwan's last uh, name? Uh, Jennings. Juwan Jennings. Jennings. Yeah, I want to call him Johnson. I don't know why. They got Juwan Johnson. I got to call him Johnson. Jennings. They don't need a receiver. But, one, this guy's a, a legit 6'4", 211 pounds. So he's actually taller than uh, Juwan Jennings. And, and he's a lot legit. Fat. He's legit a 4'4 guy. They're thinking 4'3". Now – to give my kind of report on him, you know, he's a guy that clearly, anybody that watched, you know, you watched anything from Trey Lance to college, you saw this guy. Number one, you can't miss him. You can't miss him. I mean, he's making plays all over the play field. I mean, they gave him end rounds. They gave him vertically shots. Uh, I mean, everything. He's outrunning guys. But uh, the first day, I thought he did a terrific job making contested catches. I thought he did some really good things. He won on intermediate routes. He won with separation. Did a tremendous job doing that. But I'm like... I, I, can you outrun these guys? Well, they tell me you, you're running in the four threes. All right. Can you outrun these guys vertically uh, that aren't the, at the FCS level? You know, these are more, you know, SEC guys and stuff like that. Today, he outran them. Oh, he, he? he got he got behind everybody. Yeah. The balls, uh, it was really uh, rainy. It was wet and rainy out there today. So quarterbacks, the passes were slipping out of their hands at times. But he was getting behind guys. It, they won't be on highlights because – so many of the passes to him downfield were underthrown. But, I mean, he was running by guys by three, four yards. I mean, easy target, and he's a massive, uh, you know, guy with size. So, uh, he's someone – there's always these guys where everybody's like, oh, he's going to go day I – mean, he might go day – or he might go early day two. I, you never know with these things. I remember Keelan Dawson be like, man, Keelan Dawson, I hope he's around round three. Well, he went undrafted. So, yeah. Christian Watson, there is a chance that he's there maybe even day three. 49ers, this is the guy that I know you've been looking forward to seeing the 49ers get almost like a uh was it Tyrone Williams? What was his name? Uh Williams the from the Chargers. Uh six four long. He could he could win vertically down the field. Uh um, can't think of his name right now. There, there was Tyrell Williams. Tyrell Williams. There we go. Tyrell, Tyrell yeah, Williams. Yeah. 
So, you know, just that that it's type like of guy. Rangy, yeah, rangy speed guy. And you don't have to be 6'5", but, you know, 6'2", with some size, you know, because Kyle Shanahan loves medium-sized wide receivers, right? And when he does get a fast receiver, he's tiny. And then when he gets a big receiver, he's slow. It's like, can you get one receiver that's also big and kind of fast at the same time? Right. right. You've been so, you've been waiting uh, on that, and I'm talking uh, about it. This is the guy, the bulky area era. So like yeah. this has been going on for a while. Martavis Bryant. That was my dude in the in the 49ers shadow draft. He's a little bit screwy upstairs, but um, like that is the. I mean, that could really open up the offense having that sort of a downfield type of a threat. Actually, Martavis Bryant is that a good comp for Christian Watson? That might be. That might be. I mean, he's a really good athlete. I mean, yeah. really good. So and he and he has good bend. He's not like this big stiff guy. I think he moves extremely well. I, I think there's an opportunity for him to be there kind of late in the 49ers be able to get him, depending on how fast he runs at the combine. Now, if he goes to the combine and he runs in the four threes, like some people think he will, I think he'll run like mid four fours. But if he does run the four threes, who you might have to kind of reach <laughs> a yeah, little bit. Gonna, yeah, yeah, he won't be and, there. And, Looking at that, like pick, pick 93 late third round. I think that'd be a good area area to yeah. start kind of maybe looking at a player like that if he was still available. But what I'm hearing from you, if you if you blow up and you and I've seen a lot of good reports from Watson, and I've seen a ton of good reports actually today from Jermaine Johnson, the edge you're talking about, who by the way, he would weighed in uh six four and three eighths, two hundred and fifty-nine pounds, and had nice yeah. arm length, thirty-four and three eighths. So anytime you get over thirty four, yeah, he might go first more, round a prototype and you're putting on a show. Yeah, it might price some of those guys out of where the 49ers are because they don't have a pick until 61, and their second pick is not till 93 overall late third round. Hey. Um, do have a bunch of seventh-round picks, though, so we're going to have to start talking about these three seventh-round comp picks that the 49ers are getting. Here we go. I might have a guy for you. And I, I don't, this is another guy. I, I don't know if he lasts this long, but uh, Calvin, gosh, I always forget the other name because his names, he has like two first names. It's like Calvin the third, but – there might be Austin Calvin. I don't know. Jimmy Calvin. <laughs> it, I'm looking from up, Memphis. Uh, Memphis, from Memphis. Saw, uh, Calvin Austin the third. Yeah. Calvin Austin. All right. I'll call him. Two first names. Yeah, that's why it's confusing because he could be Austin <laughs> Calvin too. So it's Calvin Austin the third. And I saw a little kick yeah. clip from him earlier. Smaller guy, right? Maybe kick returner type from Memphis. Five seven. So you know, a little bit over five seven. He's not he's not tall, but he is twitched up. He is explosive. He creates massive separation. He's turning guys around at the line of scrimmage that can't get hands on them and press. He's winning vertically, really just running right by guys. And I, I haven't watched his college film yet, but I wonder if there is that pump return, kick return aspect to his game, which is a major hole for the 49ers. So if you're talking about somebody potentially there day three because he's undersized, but has the feet, speed, explosive ability, maybe could just be a guy where – Hey, Travis Benjamin, where he comes in every blue moon, he might catch a couple, uh, a pass or two in a game, but hey, he can return kicks, he can return punts, and he can bring that aspect that the 49ers are really missing. I think Calvin Austin the third from Memphis can be one of those guys. He's just kind of vertically challenged with his height. <laughs> it says that uh, during recruiting, he ran coming out of high school 438. So depending on if he kept that speed, maybe if he gains some weight and maybe won't run that well, because I've heard a lot of prospects, you hear about guys like, oh, this guy's going to blaze at the combine and they look fast and then they run four or five flat. And you're like, oh man, where's like that James. that I thought was coming? Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, and look, the 49ers can use one of those too. Even if they drafted a guy in say round three or four, who was a bigger body type, uh, they, they, they need, they only have three wide receivers under contract. So if they add some, a more diminutive um, little, jitterbug type that can return kicks they need that too so double up on wide receivers that's fine yeah and especially if the, those seventh round picks those are those are good players that can play special teams and it looks like he does have some return experience as well so um i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna get to watching some tape on some of these guys oh yeah here we go oh we got we got punt return highlights from calvin oh okay okay i like this an insane 94 yard touchdown i don't want to play because i don't want audio to come up right here but um, okay. I'm excited about this. Okay. I like this, Crocs. Right. See, this is good. I, I need some names to start breaking down. That's what the listeners come to this podcast for in the offseason for the draft content. And I'm playing catch up right now with all the prospects at the Senior Bowl. And I love it. And we'll continue to talk about that. We'll talk about it more next week when you get back from the Senior Bowl as well. Maybe a little bit more uh, tomorrow, too. A little bit of rain at the yeah. Senior Bowl. Yeah, a little rain. Yeah. Rain. Little rain. Cool. Um, we've got to go here. We're out of time. 
We will definitely hit more prospects, more news with what's going on with the 49ers. We can start breaking things down position by position, looking at what some of those needs might be. We'll talk more about those and who's coming back for the 49ers, what they should be doing in free agency, what they could be doing in the draft, who are the best free agents out there to bring in, who are the best uh, trade assets, trade partners, what positions they should be looking for in free agency versus the draft, who they should bring back in free agency that's currently on the team. So there's a ton to break down on the 49ers roster throughout the off season, but that's why we do this every day, not only in season, but through the off season as well. So hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, hit the thumbs up and uh, everything you can hit. So, you know, when a new episode of locked on 49ers is coming and thanks for making us your first listen every single day for your second listen. Got to go check out Croc and get deeper into the draft with Locked On NFL Draft Daily. I'm doing the Peacock and Williamson NFL show talking about the entire league daily. We've got Q Myers doing Locked On Bets, the sporting world here on the network. Your team is covered no matter the sport. So if you've got a different, uh, like if you're like Croc and uh, kind of a weirdo and you like the Lakers, there's a Locked On Lakers show for you. Too. <laughs> if you're a San Francisco Giants fan, and you're trying to figure out if they're going to uh, sign the latest phenom from Japan, which I'm hoping for. Um, you can find that at Locked On San Francisco Giants podcast and, and trying to figure out when maybe that lockout might end and if they're going to get back to ball and get back to spring training here in February. Your team is covered here on the network. Croc and I back tomorrow right here. Locked on 49.